Hello, you're watching Armando Hasurungan Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan, like, ask questions, answer questions, and post interesting things, including artworks, if possible. So the process of digestion, which we'll which we'll talk about now, the physiology aspect, begins in the mouth, and we'll zoom into the oral cavity area to learn some more about the anatomy and physiology of this system. So around here we have the tongue, which actually looks like this if you cut a transsectional view of it. And the tongue is a mucus-covered skeletal muscle. What is mucus? Mucus is a liquid composed of water, immune cells, and electrolytes for protecting our tract. Saliva is produced by three major glands in the mouth. And these salivary glands are the sublingual. Sub means under, and lingual means tongue in Latin, so under the tongue, tongue sublingual. Then we have submandibula under the mandible, and lastly the parotid glands located here. So what is saliva? Saliva is composed largely of water, but it has other compounds in it that make it an important part of the digestive system. It moistens and cleans our mouth, for, for one. It moistens food. It aids in compaction, dissolves chemicals around the food to allow us to taste the actual food. But most importantly, it contains amylase. And amylase is an enzyme in the mouth that begins the digestive process for carbs. And you also have the teeth, which helps in mastication, the chewing. Mastication means chewing. So food will then travel from the oral cavity area towards the oropharynx. Oro means oral, as in mouth, and pharynx is the pharynx region. The oropharynx leads to the laryngopharynx because it's the larynx and the pharynx. So surprisingly, above the oropharynx, we have the nasopharynx, naso as in nose. And basically all these three regions, the nasopharynx, oropharynx, and laryngopharynx, they compromise the pharynx itself. And the pharynx's role in the digestive system is to propel food towards the esophagus, and it also secretes mucus. The act of swallowing is a very complex process, and I'll try to explain it. But basically, if we cut a cross-section on here, we can have the pharynx divide into two passageways. One leading towards the stomach, here, and the other leading towards the lung. So the pharynx divides into two passages. Now the passage to the lungs is anterior, in front of the one to the esophagus, which leads to the stomach. And there is a valve covering the passage to the lungs called the epiglottis. Epi means above. So when we breathe, this valve opens to allow oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass through. However, when we eat, we must close the valve to prevent food from getting into the lungs. And so the act of swallowing, or deglutination, involves the epiglottis closing, allowing the food now referred to as the bolus, to go down towards the esophagus. And the bolus moves through the esophagus through a process called peristalsis. And the bolus moves and arrives in the stomach. And the stomach secretes a variety of enzymes and chemicals, including mucus, hydrochloric acid, and pepsinogen. So we will take, uh, we will look back, now if we take a look back, we'll, we know that the mouth secretes amylase for carbohydrate digestion. The stomach secretes many things. Mucus, pepsinogen, which will be converted into pepsin, uh, hydrochloric acid, and gastrin. And we'll find uh, about more about these later on. But the stomach essentially mixes the bolus, the food, by secre and, and secretes acid to help in the breakdown. And once the food has been partially digested by the stomach, with the by the acid, it will move through the pylorus sphincter, and the sphincter is what separates the stomach from the small, small intestines. And the bolus, what it leaves, once it leaves the stomach, is referred to as chyme. So, if we take a section of the stomach to see its inner, uh, its mucus layer, its inner membrane, it comprises of many cells in the crypts. On the bottom of the crypts, we have high numbers of chief cells which secrete hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid is used to digest food and break it down further. The parietal cells, these red things, are situated all around the crypts and secrete pepsinogen, which will later convert to pepsin for protein digestion. So pepsin is for protein digestion. And then we have these other cells located everywhere which secrete mucus. And mucus is what prevents the hydrochloric acid from damaging the stomach itself. I hope you got that. And on top we have some epithelial. 
And there are, of course, other types of cells here, but we won't discuss them. But if we look back at, all, at the enzymes we've learned, we have mouth for carb digestion and stomach for protein digestion so far. So what happens in the small intestines? The small intestines follows from the stomach and is the major part of digestion and absorption in the digestive system. It is comp it's comprised of three main parts. The du duodenum, the jejunum, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, and the ileum. Now, and the ileum then connects to the large intestines. So most of the digestion and absorption actually occurs in the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. So why is the small intestine the main site of digestion and absorption? Well, for one reason, it secretes an enzyme, this small intestine secretes an enzyme called cholecytokinin, or CCK, which stimulates the gallbladder to release bile, and bile is used for fat digestion. So to put this into context, the stomach puts the chyme to the small intestine via the pylorus sphincter. Small intestine is here. The liver is located superiorly to the small intestine, and the gallbladder is just underneath it. Now the gallbladder stores bile produced by the liver, and bile, as we just saw, is, is for fat digestion. So the common hepatic duct is where the bile travels through from the liver, and the bile duct is where the bile travels through from the gallbladder. The liver is two-lobed and is composed of many hexagonal units called liver lobules. Each lobule is composed of epithelial cells called hepatocytes. Hepato means liver. And again, the liver's main role in the digestive system is to produce bile for fat digestion, and it gets stored in the gallbladder. The bile does. And the second most important thing why the small intestine is the main site of, uh, main site of absorption and digestion is, what the, is because of the pancreas. So, the pancreas, this is the pancreas. Now, the duct from the liver and the gallbladder connects with the duct from the pancreas, which then connects to the duodenum of the small intestine, this area here, the small intestine. The pancreas secretes pancreatic juice, which consists of many chemicals, enzy enzymes, and zymogens. Notably, bicarbonate, amylase, lipases, nucleases, and zymogens, or inactive enzymes. So let's again recap from the beginning of this whole digestive system secretion. The mouth secretes amylase for carb digest digestion. The stomach secretes pepsinogen, which is a zymogen, which then converts to pepsin to digest protein. The liver and gallbladder secrete bile to digest fat. And going back to the stomach, the stomach also importantly secretes hydrochloric acid to break down food with the acid. And then it also secretes mucus as self-defense against the acid. The small intestine secretes cholecytokinin, CCK, which stimulates the gallbladder to contract and release bile. The pancreas, which we just learned, secretes bicarbonate, which neutralizes hydrochloric acid because the food leaving the stomach would be acidic after the hydrochloric acid secretion. So bicarbonate neutralizes it. Amylase, same as the mouth, digests carbs. Lipases digest lipids. Nucleases digest nu nucleotides. And there are also other zymogens which the pancreas secretes, which are inactive enzymes to help in the digestive process. So finally, let's review the large intestine. The, stom the stomach is posterior to the large intestine. The large intestine wraps around like so. Now, the end of the large intestine is the appendix, whose function is not certain, but is thought to have some effect in the immune system. Then there is the cecum, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and the descending colon followed by the zygmoid, the zygmoid, the zygmond, and the rectum. The large intestines doesn't not have any digestive process, really. Its main role is to absorb water, electrolytes, and some vitamins. So let's just take a closer look at the rectum, uh, for interest sake. The rectum has both voluntary and involuntary muscles. These muscles, the external anal sphincter and the internal anal sphincter help us control the outflow of feces by tightening our bums. These things here. Just an interesting note. So anyway, hope that was interesting and exciting. Uh, 
possibly and hopefully I will put up some more videos soon on the blood supply, nerve control, and look into more detail about the absorption process in the digestive system. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and am I speaking too quickly? Thank you.